Hi, I'm Angie with Crawdaddy Magazine, and I'm here with Dave Wakeling of The English Beat. Hello, everybody, and hello to you. <laughs> hello to you. Um, so Dave's been out on the road uh, with The English Beat uh, the past few years. We've kind of been coming mm-hmm. back and playing again. What's it, what is it like to be playing these songs that you've had in your repertoire for 30 years? Well, there's a few changes. I'm playing them sober for the last few years. That was a complete change, right. you know. Uh, How long have you been sober? Well, I suppose about eight years or something like that. Um, and I have had a, uh, the occasional glass of wine one at a time since then and regretted it. Mm. It's funny when you get lose the hang of it. It's like one right. glass of wine now, I get a rotten headache. So. Yeah. Like, I can have a glass of wine the next day. I'm like, oh, God. I feel like Aubrey Beardsley need to take to your bed for three days Wine's with beef brutal. tea. Yeah. <laughs> so I was glad of that. So, uh, so I enjoy the shows. It used to be, I mean, it's very exciting. Uh, but it wasn't much to do with reality, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that is. But, uh, but I enjoy it more now. And uh, you see things that are happening, you can move quicker, uh, keep yourself in better shape. And it did used to be, really, that the concert was sometimes like this irritating, loud noise in the evening that spoilt being on tour. Right. Because I had stuff to do tonight. <laughs> uh, now, the whole day is really planned around what's going to help me sing the best mm-hmm. I possibly can at 10 o'clock. And, and now that's the focus of what I do. I enjoy it all the more for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it took 30 years to work that one out. It's a pretty fun job. You yeah, know. I know. You got a long, long apprenticeship <laughs> in it. <laughs> Finally got the secret. Got do you get like, um, requests from the audience a lot? People that are so familiar with your catalogue. Yeah, stuff. we do. And we try mainly to, to, to live up to it as well. So they shout out a song. We'll try and play that one next. Mm-hmm. We don't always know them. But the bass player knows them, so he starts, and then we all try. <laughs> like and, that one, remember that? Yeah. yeah, he remembers all of them. So um, we do that, and and they like it, especially if we can only get about halfway through. And I'm like, ah, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm not feeling that one anymore. So. But at least they know we've had a go. It's not something that we had fully rehearsed. So right. yeah, there's a few songs now have got in the set that way because it went down well, and they're like, that's quite a good song of mine. That I should learn that one. But we do learn it up then and put it back in the set, and it's mm-hmm. great. You know all the words. Don't have to sing the first verse three times. There you go. <laughs> do you? So General Public is your other band. Do you play yeah. General Public songs? When yeah, you're we do. On yeah, uh, not as many as English Beat songs. We play the hits from General Public, really, and sometimes spread it a bit more. But uh, mainly the hits, and um, then the hits from English Beat, uh, deeper fan favourites in the beat, and now a growing number of new songs. So hopefully every night, so long as everything's smooth and it sounds nice and there's no trouble or whatever, we're relaxed, then we'll probably do three or four new songs every night. Mm-hmm. People are starting to learn the words and ask for them at the T-shirt counter and we haven't finished recording them yet, so that's a good sign. Yeah, so you're set to record this year at some some. We started some recording, yeah. We started and we've got 20 odd songs uh, with the drums done and I... Uh, they're fantastic. I mean, at least six different songs, various people, and going, oh, that's a hit there, isn't it, Dave? <laughs> Which would be great if we knew what hits were now. <laughs> Are there any kind of, like, themes that you're exploring with this new material? Well, I suppose there is. I suppose there is. And, uh, two of the songs we did in that set there, they're new songs, uh, and they're kind of brother and sister songs, said we would never die. It's about, I suppose... Um, you know, make use of the day sort of thing. And The Love You Give Lasts Forever, which is quite a happy song and cheery in essence, but was actually came from the reflections me and my sister had when my mum died yeah. and we could still feel her. And it wasn't protoplasm or nothing like that, you know, uh, but it was something. And uh, uh, we figured out it was the love we'd shared with her while she was here. And that's perhaps what immortality was. Mm-hmm. It stopped us crying that day when we thought of it anyway for a minute. Yeah, so, yeah. And I still think it's true. I still think it's true. So I enjoy singing that song because of that. So there's a lot of um, life and death stuff uh, with a bit of a smile on top because life is tragic. Mm-hmm. And every decade you realise, you know, the full depth and glory of the tragedy <laughs> that, that it is. Uh, but there's lots of joy to be had along the way. And uh, so now... 30 odd years into writing songs. I don't, I don't want to pull my punches anymore. So there's not much time left, and there's no point being uh, t- suggestive. So my song about 
violence on this next record is called If Killing Worked, It Would Have Worked By Now. <laughs> which, is what, which is what I always thought since I was a kid, you know. And, uh, and particularly in a week like this, and, you know, I, I'm an American, no, so you can tell by my accent. Uh, I live here 25 years now, two teenage kids. I, uh, I care about America and how it, how it goes. And um, I worry. I worry. 1968, I was watching the black and white television with my dad, and they had the um, Democratic Convention on from Chicago, and all the students and demonstrators getting beaten up by the cops. Me and my dad were immediately on opposite sides, like, I'm, oh, oh, my dad's like, oh, get him, get him, and he's acting, you know, go out there, bastard. And uh, we moved on to something else on the news programme, and uh, my dad says, uh, Good job they ate each other, Dave. Eh? I'm like, what? He said, the Yanks. Good job they ate each other, innit? I'm like, what? Sorry? He said, well, if this lot ever got on the same team, Dave, they'd roll round the world in six months. Thank God they hate themselves more than they hate everybody else. We're safe. <laughs> like words of wisdom from Dad. 1968. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God. Well, I thought, well, they'll sorted all this stuff out by the time I've grown up. Right. Have you like considered album titles yet for this collection? Yeah, but they're always like dirty ones and stuff. <laughs> they're like joke ones. Dave Wakeling's in a woman, <laughs> if he's lucky. Um, there have been a few. I, don't, I can't remember what they are now. But uh, no, I, I think it'll it'll probably come up uh, during the the putting together of it. And there's there's right. twenty songs. I don't actually know which ones would be on it. Mm-hmm. I also, Double don't album. even know if we're making an album. <laughs> they still do. It. Uh, they don't sell them round by me, and and I never really liked them in the first place. Um, I like EPs, I do. Mm. Always did. Put out a set of EPs, that would be... I fun. would like to bring out a series of EPs, rather. I mean, um, vinyl was OK, because you had the option, didn't you, after five or six songs, you could either, like, change it and listen to side two, or you could put something else on, you know, whatever your mood was. With a CD, it's just like, oh, all 12 of them. It plays through, yeah. yeah. And, um, and you don't want to take it off. That kind of seemed disrespectful, wouldn't it? So you... But even me, even me, Mozart, any of the greats, like 12 songs in a row, you've only got a certain number of themes, I think. Mm-hmm. And for me, it just gets a bit boring listening to, right, let's talk about this subject from this angle, or from this angle. You know, there's like two or three central themes and each album in it for most artists. So I used to get a bit bored of it and I used to like a stack of singles on a record player. <laughs> oh, push the needle on. I used to enjoy that more and so I I used to like radio more than albums and I used to like um, the shuffle thing on the CD where at least you can just play arbitrary stuff. Well now you can make your, your own rules, you know. You release it as a bunch of singles. Yes, you could. I know, I know. I, I don't know how they do that either. I, it, it's a real conundrum. I've got enough songs to make two great records and I've no clue how to do it. <laughs> so I just keep playing concerts and, uh, and then people start coming to shows and they go, oh, you should do this. And hopefully it'll sort itself yeah. out. Um, kind of going back to like the origins of the English beat in 1979, Birmingham. Mm. Can you like speak a little bit to the political climate then and how that kind of informed your music? I think one of the reasons that we're doing quite good now is was that the, the, the vibes was very similar to what's going on here now in America. Very similar. You know, recession, flirting with depression and unemployment, double figures and minorities much higher and car factories closing down and nobody buying them. Uh, for England, it was the long goodbye to the British Empire. And... Uh, but it's a very, very difficult transition for people. Mm. Very difficult for my dad's generation, who'd grown up thinking they owned the world. Not they did, but they was told they did. And then all of a sudden, it had all gone. And uh, it, it, very, very hard for them to readjust. And I think that's some of what we're seeing now. It's like, you know, you go to Copenhagen for a climate conference, China and Brazil and India just have a meeting they don't invite us. It's like, well, it's all sorted. We don't need your input. Yes, but we do, Matt. It's like, it's done. Go home. Oh. Well, that's very, very difficult for America to accept, just like as it was for England. It's hard for any empire. 
And, uh, but it actually can be better. You don't always want to have to be the biggest policeman on the block. That's a boring job anyway, you know. It was boring for England and it's become boring for America, I think. Well, now as a resident of California, mm. I mean, do you feel that California itself, I mean, the political climate now? Um, I think we're, we're, we're way ahead of the pack, I've got to say. But in terms of your music, I mean, what you're creating now, do you feel like it's politically driven? In a worldwide sense, yeah, I suppose. yes, it is. Because, I mean, we, uh, you, you look to California for answers, don't you, really? Nowadays, I would. Should be a utopia, but, you know, we you can know, step out. Um, well, it's... Uh, of course, we've got some horrible issues, but I would say, travelling as much as I do, that uh, all sorts of different types of people get on better with each other in California than they do other places. And I think that's a lesson that could be learned. Um, we're far more tolerant of each other just because we've had to rub shoulders, we've had to live with each other and people have got used to it. Uh, so I think there's much to be praised of it. Um, you do so much travelling and touring, do you find that the audience audiences are quite different? Different responses to, your, yes, to your music when you play? they are indeed. Californians like to dance from the first song <laughs> or sometimes before the music's even started. They like to have fun, I Yeah, they like to have fun. <laughs> are you having fun? Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, other places are a bit more reserved and uh, you might think like the PA's not turned on or for some reason you're sucking. <laughs> and then you'll get to the end of like the third song and it's like, <laughs> like you're you the Beatles. And, yeah. then, and you play again and you have to drag them to have a dance and at the end they're like that was great I haven't danced like that in years it's like well I know we noticed <laughs> yeah, we <need> <laughs> you should try it again uh, <laughs> so I like California again for that it's uh, it's got a free and easy vibe about expressing yourself mm -hmm. you know which I, I like that uh, with musical stuff it reminds me a little bit of England because people like to have a dance in England not because they were free and easy but because they'd spent ten pounds and they was going to drag every bloody penny's worth <laughs> out of it <laughs> so uh, so I like it I, I do like doing shows in California and I just like that there's it looks like a Benetton advert out there doesn't it it sure does you know but nobody, yeah. nobody's got a problem with that and that seems grown up yeah. and I like that especially with what's going on because I know there's all sorts of political rancour at the moment in America and I, I don't think it's what they're saying it's about at all I don't even think they know what it's about but I think I do because the majority of all the old people in Arizona are white and the majority of all the young people in Arizona are not so power's going to change isn't it and I think all that's happening is people are trying to hang on to their empire when they see that democratically they're not going to own it again, are they, in 30 years? Now, I don't know if they see it as, as succinctly as that, they know they're just not telling anybody, but I think that's what's the drive about it. That's why it's not an accident that the Tea Party's predominantly white. White people are losing their empire in America, just like my dad did in Birmingham. It's very sad for them, and you have to be very gentle with them too. You can't tease them about it because it's their paradigm. They can't imagine a world any other way than being on the top of the pile. Well, I'm very glad. America and California is claiming you as one of our own now. And, uh, yeah. I mean, Your it's, dude. It's, yeah. We're very, very fortunate to have you here. Oh, I love it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, doing, spending some time here with us. Thanks. The end. <laughs>